ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, I just got off the phone with a young man that I'm helping with a, well, it's a foreclosure and it's the age of the majority. So we're having three different things going on. Small claims lawsuit for the bond, still going after that. Um, he made a couple of mistakes that made that not work uh, as well as it should have. And then we've got the bankruptcy in Chapter 11. The judge wanted a fee waiver. Let me explain something to all of you about the fee waiver. Bankruptcy courts don't have fee waivers. That's why you got to get it from the district court for the same district as the bankruptcy court. That's okay. You can use it. And you file that fee waiver. Remember, you're filing bankruptcy. You don't have the money to pay for no stupid fee, especially no seventeen thousand—I mean, seventeen hundred dollar fee. So do your fee waiver and stick to your guns on that. Don't not just give in because the judge said they're gonna dismiss it. Demand a hearing. How dare you charge me fees when you sit up here and have me paying taxes for your salary, and then you want to charge me a fee to to just the access to court? You must be out of your mind. And you're not even a constitutional court. You're a legislative venue? Bankruptcy judges are under Article 1. I believe magistrate judges are under Article 4. Ladies and gentlemen, neither one, a magistrate or a bankruptcy judge, are lawful judges when it comes to your due process right to access the court, to petition for redress. Just understand that. So if a bankruptcy judge wants to sit up there and deny you something, you deny him his seat. Deny him his even hearing the matter. Challenge his jurisdiction. You're not even a judge. I have a due process right to file bankruptcy. Congress can make it a this or that, but I still have the right to do this. Now, if you are not the proper venue, then you need to point me to the proper venue, and he's going to send you to the district court. Don't be afraid of no district court. Let him send you to the district court. That's even better. Y'all really need to understand. First, it ain't a game, but next, y'all need the peep game. I mean, just that simple. Okay, the young man called the court today, and he spoke with the clerk. And the clerk told him that the bankruptcy case had been dismissed. Well, what he didn't pay attention to <laughs> is she was correct. It had been dismissed. But I wrote the judge and I said, you must be out of your mind. You can't dismiss this case. We asked for an evidentiary hearing and we have a right to an evidentiary hearing. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, always ask for an evidentiary hearing. Whenever the judge says you can't do something, say I demand an evidentiary hearing. I demand you to put those facts on the record. Evidentiary hearing is your best friend. You have a right to an evidentiary hearing over any controversy because you have a right to a final determination, not a denied now, if a judge denies your right to an evidentiary hearing, it's appealable. That's your number one appeal reason. Oh, and by the way, you uh, have the judge recused from the matter when it is sent back on appeal for bias. Because the judge was supposed to know the law. And the ignorant idiot didn't know the law, and that's why the case got repealed and put right back in the same court. You heard me. I said repealed, recalled. Ladies and gentlemen. The clerks of the court have no power whatsoever. The only power a clerk of the court has is to stamp documents and put their signature and put the seal of the court on a document. That's it. They're just filers. They're just ministerial clerks. You all really need to start getting this. Stop calling the clerk of the court thinking that they're going to tell you something helpful. I had one guy saying, the clerk say it, uh, I'm going to give you something. I'm not supposed to be telling you this. Well, the first thing you need to know is when somebody tells you, I am not supposed to be telling you this, that you can't trust them. Hold on. Don't you understand? If somebody tells you, well, I'm really not supposed to be talking about this, then you shouldn't be listening to that idiot because that idiot can't be trusted. How dare you tell something to somebody and then they go and tell it to somebody else behind your back? You can't trust that fool. So when you have a clerk of the court, and they do this often, well, I'm not supposed to be telling you this. Don't trust that fool. Yeah, yeah, you can listen to what they're saying, but go confirm it. But don't trust them. Well, I don't trust nobody. Anyway, stop listening to these clerks of the court. 
Sorry, guys, I've been doing this for way too long. I've seen the clerk of the court lie to people. And then come back and say they didn't do it. Oh, don't take my word for it. Too many people out there complaining about it. I promise you, I ain't checked, but I promise you there's a couple of YouTube videos on about how the clerk of the court lied to someone. Just put that in. Put it in Google. The clerk of the court lied to me. And listen to the horror stories of how the judge didn't do anything. Because the clerk of the court has qualified immunity. No one has immunity to lie. But the police do. No, they don't. There is no constitutional amendment allowing the police to lie. Okay, let me see if I can explain this. You have the absolute, absolute right to due process. You can't even waive your right to due process. No, 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 no. Go ahead. Go look it up. I've never looked that up. But I guarantee you one thing. In the United States, you can't waive your right to due process or equal protection of law. Go ahead. I dare you to find me a case where the Supreme court says, well, he waived his right to due process. It's impossible. Why? Because the Constitution guarantees everyone the right to due process. Not that it's a secured right, because it definitely is a secured right, but without due process, the government can't function. There is no government. There is no sovereign anything. Due process is the foundation of law. Without due process, the law does not exist. That's why every constitution has the right to due process in it, people. You can't waive your right to due process. You don't have the authority to do so. Even if you were to be put in servitude, you still have the right to due process. So y'all really need to understand, I didn't start doing this yesterday. Okay, let some judge or some attorney argue with me on what I just said. I guarantee you I'll put them to sleep. I guarantee you they'll have nothing else to say after talking to me. Because that's a fundamental, ooh, foundational, sound fact. Hold on. Let, let's ask ChatGPT. Now, we don't trust ChatGPT because he lies too. Hold on. Hey, comma, I got a question. Comma, due process is a fundamental right, isn't it? Question mark. And if due process is a fundamental right, comma, can it ever be waived? Stop listening. Now watch me check him because the courts will say the same thing. This is what he says, y'all. Yes, due process is indeed a fundamental right under the U.S. Constitution. It is explicitly protected under the Fifth and Fourteenth Amendments, which guarantee that no person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. This right applies to both federal and state Yes, due process can be waived in certain circumstances, but only if the waiver is made knowingly, voluntarily, and intelligently. This is common in legal contexts where individuals... Now, hold on. He's talking about the right to counsel. You can waive the right to counsel. The right to counsel is a due process right, but it is not the right to due process. So let's correct him. Wake up. Wake up. You're an idiot comma. Nobody said anything about the right to counsel not being a due process right, but it is not due process, comma. Due process is not the right to counsel, comma. The right to counsel is a part of the due process that an individual is entitled to, period. But due process is foundational, comma, fundamental, comma, no sovereign government, democratic or otherwise, may operate without due process, period. Even a tyrannical government recognizes due process, period. Due process is that, comma, 
governments must follow, comma, corporations must follow, comma, individuals must follow certain procedural guidelines, period. Due process is not a specific circumstantial right, comma, due process is a foundational right, exclamation mark. Stop listening. This is not going to last long, ladies and gentlemen. I have a meeting in less than five minutes. What I want to tell you is this. What I just told him has variances to it. Every single thing I said has some unique caveats. You'll see him explain it in just a second, and he's going to do some explaining. Trust me. I know I'm correct, you ignorant mother... Uh-oh, you still writing? Oh, you didn't write that much? Hold on. You're correct. Due process is indeed a foundational and fundamental right that applies to the actions of governments, requiring adherence to established legal procedures and protections. It is not confined to specific rights like the right to counsel, but serves as the overarching principle that ensures fairness and legality in any deprivation of life, liberty, or property. The point I was making earlier was that individual- Nobody cares. Wait, no, no, let me explain to you what due process is. Let's say it was a tyrannical rule of a government. The king is just, he's just mean. He just, man, he don't like nobody. But pay attention. He still has rules. And he must follow those rules. And his people must follow those rules. What happens if he violates the rules? Then he violated due process. Due process has nothing to do with somebody violating due process. It's your right to due process. It has nothing to do with whether or not somebody violates the right to due process because even with that violation, a tyrannical government has procedures. Due process is procedure, process, procedure, processing, procedure. That's due process, ladies and gentlemen. They have to follow procedure. Lord have mercy. That's why they made the Administrative Procedures Act. You don't believe me? Go back and look at what Congress's intent was. Too many corporations out there and too many administrative agencies were doing what they wanted to do. They had their own thing. Heavy D. Okay? And they had to correct that stupidity. Like I said, let anybody who thinks they know law challenge me. I dare them. Now, I ain't never talked about this before, but I understand foundational principles of law. So as long as you understand, I keep telling everybody, somebody just asked me about the uh, federal operating reserve, I mean, uh, operating federal reserve operating circular number 10. Ladies and gentlemen, I ain't doing no consults with anybody on telling you how to access operating procedure number 10. My consults are consults. It's not for me to teach you something. Please, it's a consultation. It's not a history lesson or a class or anything like that. Stop it, people. Sorry, there's no way in the world you're going to pay the consultation fee and I'm supposed to make you hundreds of thousands of dollars more well-to-do. You must be out of your... I'm, I apologize. Ooh, Usa. 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 Sorry, there are just too many people asking me to rid them of all of their debt during a consult. Now, some people I have helped. But let me explain something, ladies and gentlemen. That's not a consultation. Understand what a consultation is. I'd rather deal with people who are facing court, facing trial. I'd rather deal with those people before they don't have any last option. I'd rather deal with those people before the attorneys hem them up to where they stuck one way or the other. There's too many things that people can do to make their case go smoother and if they bring a case against you you just have to stay the course you have to allow the paperwork to do its job people paperwork is effective when you place the right paperwork on the record let me explain that bankruptcy case i was telling you about the judge dismissed it the judge dismissed it so I wrote the notice of appeal, but I didn't just write any notice of appeal because a notice of appeal just needs to say notice of appeal. No, I hammered that fool. And I said I was introducing that on the record. Well, he didn't want that to be on the record, so he wrote another order saying that he had 14 days to explain why the fee waiver should be granted. That means the case is still pending. It ain't dismissed. The clerk of the court told him, no, it's, it's dismissed. 
Well, if it's dismissed, then why is the judge saying he's got 14 more days to respond? As long as the judge has said he's got 14 more days and he's allowing another filing into the case, the case is not dismissed. Nobody asked that idiot for reconsideration. He decided that because he knew what I was going after. Again, I've been doing this for a while. Hey, I got to go. I told you I had less than five. Now I have less than one. Take care, y'all.